Hello and good evening. Uh, today is our sixth class. So I think uh, first better I talk about your topic uh, and then uh, we can wait uh, for the rest of the class uh, and then start it, okay? Uh, so Mr. Mirvais, uh, your topic is about uh, uh, solid waste management uh, of Kabul city. Uh, all right, can you explain more that exactly what do you want to do in your research? Can you talk to me? Thank you. You're fixing or you've got a problem? All right, I don't know the problem uh, here from which side, uh, from my side or your computer. All right, no problem. And uh, just uh, I ask you some question about your topic, and you can answer me in the chat box. Is it okay for you? All right, uh, so your topic uh, is about uh, solid waste management uh, for Kabul city, Kabul, yeah. Okay, uh, as I know the waste management, okay, for solid waste management, there are lots of process, for example, collection, transport, and uh, disposal, and for example, recycling, all of them uh, is under solid waste management. So I want to know, uh, do you want uh, to have a research in all of these parts, or you just want to focus on one of them? And what is your aim for this research? You want to make uh, some improvement, make uh, strategies, and uh, do, uh, I mean, suggest some recommendation uh, for uh, improving the solid waste management in Kabul, or you just want to see how is the solid waste management in Kabul and just investigate it. Uh, please uh, tell me in the chat box. Thank you. So uh, you think that solid waste management in Kabul uh, is a very big challenge. Uh, so you want uh, first to see the uh, process uh, of waste management and then uh, by giving some suggestion and recommendation uh, try to make some improvement. Am I right? All right, uh, so if you want to have a, a good conclusion, 
All right. Uh, if you want uh, to have a, a complete research uh, about solid waste management, okay, so it's good that you see uh, all of this uh, process, okay, uh, the collecting, the transporting, the processing, the managing and monitoring, and uh, also recycling. You should uh, have a, uh, it's good, it's better, okay, there is no should, but it's better if you you can uh, investigate in all of the process of uh, waste management and after that uh, you can see exactly in which part of this process you see a uh, more problem uh, and then uh, go and research and find that what's the solution. This is my idea about your topic. Okay, uh, at this moment, uh, you understand that there is no system for managing. Uh, so it means that uh, maybe there is no specific uh, solid uh, way, uh, management for, uh, for example, couples. Uh, all right, uh, so it's good. Maybe uh, in the management part, uh, there is a big problem and the issue is about the managing system. Uh, or maybe also there are problems in uh, process of, for example, collecting, uh, processing, recycling, all of these parts. So uh, you should uh, focus all of the process and then uh, get the conclusion that which of them should be more, be, uh, more uh, pay attention to this, okay? Uh, all right, uh, it's good. Uh, you can do this research, and I agree. If you have any question about your topic, you can ask me now. Samavis, do you have any question about the topic? All right. Uh, so uh, again, uh, I ask you that uh, you narrow to all parts of the waste management, okay? Collecting, transporting, processing, and also uh, recycling, all right? Uh, because you want to make a, a recommendation, you want to suggest, you search for improvement, uh, so you should narrow uh, to all of this part, to all of the process of uh, waste management. All right, thank you. Uh, so I think now we can start the class uh, by presentation. Uh, so maybe there's no need uh, to send me the uh, table of content because you know table of content uh, should be finalized after you do your proposal. Uh, maybe it's good if uh, first you focus uh, on your topic. Now the topic is finalized. I agree with your topic. The next step uh, is that for you that you should think about the research objective and research question and the other important part is the problem statement. Uh, when uh, you send me your research question, research objective, and problem statement of your research, it means that half done, okay, half of your research done. And uh, if uh, I uh, see if I see your research question and research objective and problem statement of your research and I see that it's okay, you can do this research, you have enough reason and there is a need for this reason and uh, for this research regarding to your problem statement, all right? Uh, then you can go to find a table of content and then uh, write your research chapter by chapter. Uh, but at this uh, step, 
after finalizing the topic, you need uh, to write the proposal that I always mention. Uh, the proposal including the research uh, objective, research uh, question, and research, and research problem statement of your research. Maybe four or five pages, all right? Thank you. Uh, I cannot uh, say you that uh, first you should find research question or first you should uh, think about research objective because uh, uh, research question, uh, RQ, I mean, uh, and research objective, RO, all right, uh, they are two sides of one mirror, okay? So whenever uh, you talk about the research objective, you should think about research question as well. And whenever uh, you want to think about the research question, you should uh, think and talk about research objective as well. So you can do it parallelly. All right, it depends on you that uh, in your mind which one comes first, uh, but uh, you should think about research question and objective parallelly and do it uh, together if you want to have a good proposal, all right? Uh, the research like this, you cannot uh, first go to find the research question and say, okay, it's finished. Now I want to think about the research objective. They are together, okay? They are not separate, uh, all right? And then uh, I think it's better if you start with problem statement of the research because this is very important. When you find first a uh, research problem, a problem statement, all right? And after that, you can think about the research question and research objective together. Because uh, many times, uh, the research has good uh, objective and question, but uh, when uh, we see the problem statement of the research, we see, okay, there is no need to, this, uh, to doing uh, this research. Uh, so the problem statement, I think, the first thing, then RO and RQ. All right, you are welcome. Good luck in your research. Now I think uh, we wait enough uh, so we can start our presentation. And last class, uh, we talk about the uh, research design and research choices and strategies that all uh, can come to the uh, conceptual framework of your research. Uh, today I want to talk about sampling because uh, after chapter one that we talk about the research question, research objective and problem statement. Then we go to uh, chapter two and we have a presentation. We had a presentation about the literature review, how write the literature review. And then now, uh, uh, step by step, uh, we should talk about the methodology, all right? Uh, so we talk about the uh, research, uh, Purpose. So we divide it to two main research purposes: uh, qualitative and quantitative. We talk about different type of the research, and all of them uh, related to research methodology. So going on our discussion about the methodology, and today um, we talk about uh, research uh, sampling. How is the sampling should be? All right. Now I want to share this slide. Okay, now can you see this slide? You can see that slide good. Uh, let me accept.
Okay. Uh, the outlines of today's presentation, the first one is why sampling, reasons for sampling, sampling process, sample population, sampling method, because there are uh, many sampling method, all right? And then uh, as a whole, uh, we divided to uh, two main sampling methods, probability and non-probability. Okay, why sample? Uh, why not study everyone? Uh, debate about census versus sampling. Why do we sample? Uh, because size of the population, cost of obtaining elements, and convenience and access, uh, accessibility of elements. This is very clear that why we should do sampling in our research and we cannot study for everyone. It's very obvious, all right? It's clear. Again, reasons for sampling. Budget and time concentrate, okay? Uh, in case of large population, high degree of uh, accuracy and reliability if sample is representative of population. And sampling may sometimes uh, produce more accurate results than taking a census as the latter, all right? Why? Because there are more risks for making interviewer and other errors due to the high volume of person contacted and the number of census takers, some of whom may not be well trained. Uh, so, of course, because we cannot uh, have an uh, investigation for everyone, an uh, investigation of everyone, and we cannot have interview from everyone, so sampling needs in, uh, in our research. So, uh, if you look at this uh, picture, you see population and where is the location of the sample. So, population is a very large and big uh, cycle and the sample is a small one. So a small a sample is a subset of large population of object, individual, household, business, organization, and so forth. This is very clear. Sampling enables researchers to make estimate of some unknown characteristic of the population in question, all right? And uh, Finite group is called population, whereas a non-finite uh, group is called universe. A census is an investigation of all the individual elements of population. So, can you hear me very well? Everything is okay? All right. Uh, so. Sample, uh, again, I mentioned that uh, sample is a subset of population selected to estimate the behavior or characteristic of the population. So it is important that you know first sample is a subset of population. The second point is that uh, it estimates uh, behavior or uh, behavior or characteristic of the population, all right? Importance of sampling probably a sample exists to represent its parent population, all right, and we must know what the actual parent population is, otherwise we draw, we draw false conclusion. So exactly we should know that uh, which population uh, is target for our uh, research, what is the parent population, and then from that uh, we uh, take the sample. So as a whole uh, graph, you can see the sampling process as a whole picture you can see in, uh, in this uh, slide. That uh, first define the target population, then select a sampling frame that I will explain about sampling frame in next uh, slide. And then determine if a probability or non probability sampling method you will uh, choose and then uh, sampling size and sampling unit and conduct billboard. So this is the whole um, picture and process of the sampling. 
So about population, uh, it's uh, all the potential study elements as defined, careful specification of the population. And study population, almost impossible to guarantee that every element meeting your definition of the population has a chance to be selected uh, into the sample. This is clear. There is uh, no guarantee, all right? Uh, and always we try uh, to do the best and accurate uh, sample, but we cannot cover everyone, all right? Thus, the study population will be somewhat smaller than the population. So, uh, about target population, what is target population? The target population is the complete group whose relevant characteristics are to be determined through the sampling. Uh, so it is the complete uh, group, the better group, the near group that, uh, there, uh, that is, uh, exists in the population. And the target population may be, for example, uh, all faculty members in the Department of Management Science in the Compass Network. Or, uh, if I want to say what is the CompSat, CompSat is a commission on science and technology for sustainable development in the South Asia, right? Uh, so this is the example. For example, from all of the cosmos, just faculty members in the Department of Management Science, all right? Or, for example, another example for target population can be all housewives in Kabul or all pre-college students in Kuala Lumpur, or all medical doctors in Afghanistan. These are the examples for target population. The target group should be clearly delimited if possible. For example, do all pre-college students include only primary and secondary students, or also students in other specialized educational institutions? So I put some examples that you can get better idea about this, okay? So uh, another slide is about choice of sample size influenced by. So if you want to know that what is the sample size, uh, we should talk about the choices that sample size influenced by. Influence by confidence needed in the data, margin of error that can be tolerated, types of analysis to be undertaken, and finally, size of sample population and distribution. Uh, okay, now I see the, one of the questions. Uh, do we need sampling just for population? Uh, what do you mean just for population? What other do you think we need, Mr. Mewes? But your question is not clear for me. Mr. Mavis, can you give me uh, more clarification about your question? Okay, uh, I cannot get your idea exactly, but I think uh, you mean uh, that uh, sampling, uh, what is the location of sampling your research, or maybe you mean that uh, what's the purpose of sampling? Okay, when uh, you do your research, all right, um, for example, uh, you Yes, exactly. For your research, for example, uh, solid waste management in Kabul, um, you cannot uh, take all the houses in Kabul. You cannot uh, do your research, for example, spread out the interview, uh, the questionnaire for everyone in Kabul. You cannot do this. Uh, your uh, estimation, uh, your research, 
and should be in Kabul, but you cannot investigate one by one. Of course you cannot, all right? So uh, you should choose the target population, and from the target population you should do the sampling. Yes. Yes, for example, uh, because uh, solid waste management mean, mean uh, solid, uh, uh, solid garbage, solid uh, waste things, okay, all of the disposal, all right? So uh, you can take, for example, factory, uh, you can take houses, you can take, uh, for example, hospitals. Uh, the most thing that uh, can has a can have a main role in waste uh, solid waste, all right? Solid waste management. So you have a population of them, and then you have a target, and then you can make a sample. All right. Okay. So the sampling frame. The sampling frame is a list of all those population elements that will be used in the sample. Example of sampling frame are a student telephone uh, directory for a student population. Okay. Uh, the list of companies or the other example. And the list of companies on the stock exchange or the directory of medical doctors and specialists, the yellow pages for business. Okay, for business, uh, we have a yellow pages. Okay, often the list uh, the list does not include the entire population. This is very obvious. No list in the world can include all the population. The discrepancy is often a source of error associated with the selection of the sample. And information relating to sampling frames can be obtained from commercial organizations. There are some organizations that do this. Sampling unit. The sampling unit is a single element or group of elements subject to selection in a sample. Example. Uh, so, as an example, we can say every student uh, at Comset whose first name begins with the letter F, all right, or all tried passengers under 18 years of age who are traveling in a train from destination X to destination Y, or all jeweler shops in sector F6, F7, and F8 in Islamabad, all right? All of them can be example for sample unit. Okay, types of quantitative sampling. Um, if uh, we have a quantitative research, as we talked about the quantitative research before, all right, so we can have a quantitative sampling strategy. Uh, so these strategies divide to two methods of sampling. The first one is probability, and the second one is non-probability sampling, okay? Uh, again, uh, the probability sampling uh, can divide to three parts. Uh, simple random sampling, stratified sampling, and multi-stage cluster sampling. And for non-probability sampling, convenience sampling, and snowball sampling. Uh, so uh, this is the whole idea and picture about uh, different methods of sampling strategies for quantitative research. And then all of them I will explain uh, in next and next slide. So again, I put this slide that you see the um, different method for sampling, okay? Random sample, stratified, uh, quasi sampling, cluster sampling, contact or snowball sampling, and multi-stage sampling. 
So the two main group of uh, sampling uh, divide to probability and non-probability, okay? So for uh, as a whole, uh, for probability sampling, you can say it is a selection of individuals from the population so that they are representative of a population. But for non-probability, the sampling is a selection of participants because they are available, convenient, or represent some characteristic in the investigator wants to study. Deciding who to choose, basically two sample strategies available, probability and non-probability. So for probability sampling, each member of the population has a certain probability to be selected into the sample, all right? But for non-probability sampling, members selected not according to logic of probability, it means but the uh, other means, example, convenience or access. Uh, so, for uh, so as a one sentence, uh, you can uh, memorize that probability sampling. All of the member of the population has certain probability, but uh, of course, for non-probability, there is uh, no logic of probability. Okay, members selected not according to the logic of probability. Again, for probability sampling, we can say that every element in the population under study has a non-zero probability of selection to a sample, and every member of the population has an equal probability of being selected. So the key point is that for probability sampling, every member of the population equal has an equal chance, has an equal probability of being selected. But for non-probability sampling, there isn't a reason, uh, there isn't the equal chance uh, for choose the member of population. So an arbitrary means of selecting sampling using based on subjective consideration, okay, such as personal judgment or convenience, it is less preferred to probability sampling. Uh, so why? Why uh, sometimes researchers uh, do not uh, do non-probability sampling? Why? Because sometimes it's not possible to get the kind of information about population required for probability sampling. Or, for example, when the sampling frame is not known, or complicates and limits statistical analysis or often well suited for qualitative research where distribution of characteristics is not important. So when you are doing your research and face to this option, so you choose and you decide that you make a non-probability sampling for your research. Okay, I have a question now uh, from Sami West. The non-probability is the calculation. I think you want to write calculation of the real data. Uh, the discussion, the issues, uh, and the key point about the non-probability and probability uh, sampling is not about real or not real. All of the data are real, of course real, all right? But in the probability, we give 
equal chance, we give equal probability to every member, to each of the member of the population, all right? But in non-probability, we choose them, for example, because uh, some of the members of this population, we can contact to them more easily or because of our convenience or many other reasons. But we don't uh, give equal uh, chance, equal uh, probability to member of the population. That means non-probability. But in both of them, we talk about real data, real information, all right? So the difference, the difference uh, between non-probability and probability is uh, equal chance, equal probability. If we give equal, meaning that we do probability sampling. If we don't give equal chance, so it means we do non-probability sampling. I don't know, can you uh, get your answer or not? Is it clear? Okay, good. So uh, for non-probability sampling, uh, okay, again, I put this slide that sh uh, show you that why researchers sometimes do non-probability sampling, because there's the convenience sampling. This is a sampling technique which selects those sampling units most conveniently available at a certain point in or over the period of time, okay? The major advantage of convenience sampling or non-probability sampling is that it is quick, convenient, and economical. A major disadvantage is that the sample may not be representative, okay? So, uh, of course, both of these methods had some advantages and some disadvantages. So for non-probability sampling, of course, it is very quick uh, if we have a time limitation, concentrate, okay? And uh, it is very economical. And also if we have, a, for example, um, budget limit, okay, it is very economical and it is very convenient. But the big and major disadvantage is that maybe the sample not be uh, representative because we choose it, all right? And uh, convenience sampling is best used for the purpose of exploratory research and supplemented subsequently with probability sampling. Uh, so if you do uh, exploratory research, so it is very really common and usual that you use non-probability sampling. So uh, the other slide explain more about non-probability sampling. Uh, it's that judgment sampling. This is a sampling technique in which the business researcher selects the sample based on judgment about some appropriate characteristic of the same members. All right. Uh, so it's uh, as you see in this slide. Uh, this slide said that. Uh, researcher, business researcher, do the non-probability sampling. Uh, why? Because sometimes uh, business researchers select the sample based on their judgment, okay? Judgment about uh, some appropriate, some suitable characteristic of the sample member. Example, the consumer price index that we call it CPI is based on a judgment sample of market-based items, for example, housing costs, and other selected goods and services which are representative for most of the overall population in terms of their consumption. So business researcher think, okay, now we think the uh, most appropriate characteristic uh, for, for example, uh, market base, all right, uh, this item, housing cost or other selected goods and I, we think that these are representative for overall population in terms of their consumption. These items more affect on consumption, uh, so we choose only this item. Okay, so this is very common for business researcher that use non-probability. 
Example 2, for example, selection of certain voting district will serve as indicator for the national voting trend. So many times we uh, do the probability, uh, probability we, we choose probability sampling, and then after that, uh, from the result, we come to the indicator. But sometimes uh, from the first, we have indicator because we think that they are more appropriate, more suitable, and more near to the characteristic of our uh, element and sample member. Uh, so we use non-probability. So it depends on your research that how it's going on. So another method for non-probability sampling is Goethe sampling. This is a sampling technique in which the business researcher ensure that certain characteristics of population are represented in the sample to an extent which is he or she desire. Again, by segment or not randomly selected or a specific number on each segment are interviewed and may not be fully representative and cheaper method. So they are the advantage and disadvantage of this method. As example, all right? So a business researcher wants to determine and uh, through interview the demand for product X in a street which is very diverse in terms of its uh, ethnic composition, all right? So if the sample size is a consist of 100 units, the number of individuals from each ethnic group interviewed should correspond to the group percentage composition of the total population of the district. So, Okay, uh, so regarding to the example, so we can see that uh, Queto sampling uh, has advantage and disadvantage. Advantage include the speed of data collection, less cost, the element of convenience, and representativeness if the subgroup in the sample are selected properly. And disadvantages is include the element of subjectivity, uh, for example, convenience sampling rather than probability-based, which leads to improper selection of sampling units. Most of the time, uh, there are advantages and disadvantages of different methods under uh, non-probability sampling very uh, near to each other, they are same. So another uh, method of uh, non-probability sampling is the snowball sampling. This is a sampling technique in which individuals uh, or organizations are selected first by probability method, and then additional respondents are identified based on information provided by the first group of respondents. Example, throw a sample of 500 individuals, uh, 20 scuba diving enthusiasts are identified which in turn identify a number of other scuba diving. So that means that first we have a the, we have a sampling based on probability, uh, but because of the result uh, for the group uh, that we choose it uh, by probability sampling, uh, we have uh, another selection that this is uh, called non-probability and snowballing sampling, that uh, we can put it under non-probability. So the advantages of a snowball sampling is that smaller sample sizes and costs are necessary. Again, uh, we have a, a better low uh, cost, all right? A major disadvantage is that second group of respondents suggested by the first group may be very similar and not representative of the population uh, with that characteristic. Because if the first sample is not correct, it's not a uh, good choice, okay? Uh, 
the next one because based on the first group, so again, uh, come to the error, all right? Uh, they near to error. Uh, so this is a disadvantage. And maybe uh, because the second group uh, is uh, selected from the first one, so maybe they are very uh, near to each other and they cannot be the good representative, all right? So uh, we talk about the non-probability sampling, uh, and we mentioned all the methods under uh, the non-probability sampling. Uh, now this slide wants uh, to explain about probability sampling. Uh, the first method is simple random sampling. Uh, this is a technique which ensures that each element uh, in the population has an equal chance of being selected for the sample, equal chance of anyone being picked, why equal? Because it's probability. So when to talk, when we talk about probability sampling, meaning that we talk about equal chance. So random samples may select those not in the target group, indiscriminate, all right? Sample size may be need to be large and to be representative can be very expensive. And these are the advantage and disadvantage of this method. Example, uh, choosing a raffle ticket from a drum, computer generated selection, random digit telephone dialing. All right, the major advantage of simple random sampling is its simplicity. It's very simple. It's very simple method. Okay, the second uh, method under probability sampling is systematic sampling. This is a technique which in uh, which an initial starting point is selected by a random process after which every then every nth number on the list is selected to constitute part of the sample. Uh, so, example, from a list of 1,500 name entries, a name on the list is randomly selected and then say every 25th name and thereafter. The sampling interval in this case would equal 25. Uh, so, for example, this is very clear uh, example that, for example, we have 1,500 names, we choose, for example, the uh, 120 names and say, okay, after that, uh, we choose every 25th name. So that means that all the other uh, members of the population has equal because we say every 25th. For systematic sampling to work best, the list should be random in nature and not have some underlying systematic pattern. This is the characteristic of this method. Okay, another method under probability sampling is a stress a stratified sampling. Okay, this is a technique which in which simple random subsample and drawn from with uh, within different stata that share some common characteristics. Uh, a stratify or segment random sampling uh, samples on the basis of representative strata segment still random but more focus may give more relevant information may be more cost effective. Example, the student body of CIIT is divided into two groups, management, science, and engineering. And from each group, a student are selected for a sample using simple random sampling in each of the two groups, whereby the size of the sample for each group is determined by the group's overall strength. Uh, this is, for example, the example that Mr. Mivez can use in his research that uh, divides all the population of Kabul that um, cause, uh, cause uh, solid waste to, for example, uh, hassling the factories, the hospitals, and from each of them choosing the group. 
stratified sampling has the advantage of giving more representative sample and less random sampling error. The disadvantage lies in that is more complex and formation are the strata may be difficult to obtain. So this method is some, in some way we can say that it's complicated. So there are other specialized techniques of sampling uh, that we can call it uh, the method of sampling under probability, for example, cluster sampling or multi-stage area sampling or internal sampling. For cluster sampling, we say that primarily based on geographical areas or cluster that can be seen as being representative of the whole population. Uh, for example, if we want to do the research in the whole country of Afghanistan, maybe we need to have a cluster sampling, for example, uh, based on the geographical, for example, a couple, uh, the city in the center uh, of Afghanistan, for example, as a geographical uh, approach, uh, south or north or east or west of the Afghanistan as a cluster sampling and as a whole then we can have a good uh, idea about the whole country. So we have by doing the cluster sampling or multi-stage area sampling, sampling selected from the multi-stage or subgroup and internal sampling. So issues in sample design and selection. And the first issue is accuracy, okay? Uh, samples should be representative of the target population. Uh, less accuracy is required for accelerated research than for conclusive research project. So uh, if you want to do the conclusive research project, meaning that you have a um, good conclusion and do the uh, suggestion and, re and recommendation, all right? So the accuracy of the information data collection is very important. Uh, so samples uh, that you choose, so samples should be representative of the target population. You should more uh, pay more attention about accuracy, okay? And the resources, uh, time, money, individual or situational capacity are very important. Uh, consideration due to the limitation on them, all right? You have a money limitation, you have a time, or no, you don't have all of these factors uh, affect on the method of sampling that you will choose. And often, uh, these resources must be treated against accuracy. When you have a concentrate, so of course, uh, these concentrate may be affect on your accuracy and decrease it. Another issue uh, for sample design selection is availability of information. This is another uh, key point. Often uh, information on potential sample participants in the form of these directories are uh, unavailable, okay? Especially developing countries. In developing countries, we don't have a good directory. We don't have lots of uh, complete directory uh, that which make uh, some sampling technique, for example, systematic sampling, impossible to undertake. Uh, so, if, we, if, if in our uh, country of our research, uh, we don't have a complete and comprehensive and good uh, directory, so we cannot uh, choose the systematic sampling. All right. Geographical consideration, the number and dispersion of population element may, be, may uh, determine the sampling technique and uh, cluster sampling. So if you want to do the uh, wide uh, geographical uh, area for your research, of course you should have a cluster. So a geographical consideration also affects on your method of your uh, sampling. It's effect that which method of sampling you will use. And a statistical analysis, it should be performed only on samples which have been created through probability sampling. So uh, finally, in the last slide, I want to tell you keys to good sampling. Okay, randomness is the key. Allow reliance upon the natural characteristic of probability theory. Avoid bias 
okay, designed to include all known subgroups, something that is select will respond has a good return rate, okay? This is the uh, for a key point that if you do and you, you consider, uh, consider them, you can have a good sampling. Uh, now I think uh, the presentation, uh, the slides that present the sampling of the research uh, finished. So if you have any question, you can ask. Okay, Mr. Mavis, if you have any question, you can ask me. All right, uh, from the slide that you can hear and that if you have any question, you can ask me now. And uh, after class, you can review the slides because I emailed to you before and uh, review them. And if you have any question, you can just email to me. All right, no problem. you can review the slides, all right, that I emailed to you before. Uh, or if you want to have a presentation, okay, the today presentation, uh, you can go to YouTube and, uh, of course, uh, WWS uh, YouTube, and then you can uh, see the see today presentation. Both of them possible that you can get the idea of today. Right. Uh, if you have any question about your research topic and the presentation, you can ask me. If no, we can finish today, finish uh, the class. Uh, also, because I see that um, you are very serious about your research, I think uh, next week, uh, maybe in, uh, yeah, yeah, next week uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, so uh, the last uh, semester student, my student uh, from uh, October intake, uh, they have, uh, they will have the pre-defense on, uh, on their research. So, uh, if you want, uh, you can attend this class. I think this is very good for you because you can see lots of research that uh, have done by students in Afghanistan. I will inform you. Um, I try, I try that uh, inform you to attend, uh, but I don't know for pre-defense uh, is it possible or no. Uh, but uh, also we have a final defense session for students that uh, this 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 uh, final defense should be free uh, for everyone. I mean, 
you can attend it. Uh, but uh, for pre-defense that I told it will be in next week, I'm not sure that a student from other intake can join us or no. Uh, but uh, for final defense, I'm sure that everyone can attend, every, uh, everyone can join us. Uh, so uh, just uh, uh, you pay uh, attention to your email that you're receiving from WWS, they will inform you. Thank you. Uh, so I hope uh, you can start your research uh, soon and send me your proposal. Uh, and if you don't have any other question, uh, we can finish the class now. Okay, you are welcome. Uh, all right, thank you for attendance, and uh, we will have a next class uh, on next Monday. I hope to see you on next class. Thank you very much. Uh, good luck in your research, and bye.